Greetings to you all as we prepare for this time of communion, when we remember with sadness and gratitude the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and with joy at his resurrection. We could ask the question, why did this have to happen? Romans 8 verses 1 to 4 gives us a good summary. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful natures. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. In my home group study on Romans, two words describe the results of Jesus' sacrifice. They are justification and sanctification. Justification is not getting away with our punishable acts, but being forgiven in spite of them. And justification by faith, although the Lord Jesus paid the, paid the price for our justification, it is through faith that he is received and his righteousness is experienced and enjoyed. That is, we must accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour to allow that justification to apply to us. The other word, sanctification, from the study on Romans, this question was asked. How long does it take to be saved? The answer is a moment and a lifetime. Justification is the moment. Sanctification, or becoming more like Jesus Christ, is the lifetime. In other words, becoming sanctified doesn't mean we're no longer sinners. It means we are sinners in the process of being transformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. I hope I hope this helps us to understand why Jesus had to suffer and die on that cross and also how he had to rise from the dead to show his victory and now ours over death. A story from our Roman study may be a good example of this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. From wretched slave ship captain to Anglican clergyman and author of the timeless hymn, Amazing Grace, John Henry Newton's life is a striking portrayal of sanctification. After a disgraceful desertion of the Royal Navy, Newton began his career in the triangular slave trade. He said of himself, I was capable of anything. I had not the least fear of God before my eyes, nor, so far as I remember, the least sensibility of conscience. After one st stormy night at sea, Newton admitted his wretchedness and promised to change his life. He claimed to be a new man, yet many years passed before his conversion became evident in his daily life. Newton once said of himself, I am not what I might be, I am not what I ought to be, I am not what I wish to be, I am not what I hope to be. But I thank God I am not what I once was, and I can say with the great apostle, by the grace of God, I am what I am. These words paint for us a true picture of sanctification. As we take these emblems of Jesus' sacrifice, or justification, the bread his body, the cup his blood, let us be aware of the Holy Spirit's presence within us, and be mindful of the fellowship and guidance available through him as we continue our transformation into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Please, will you pray with me? Mighty God, thank you so much for your love that allowed your Son to die for our sins. We can at times struggle to realise the enormity of his, this act. Please accept our thanks and praise and bless these emblems to us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And as you take these emblems, you remember you have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit at all times 
because of Jesus' sacrifice. God bless you all.